Glory to God. Everybody, as you're joining in, as you're joining in, share this broadcast. Can I have you share me? And after you share me, say, Lord, I received the prophet's award. This is going to be deep, deep. King like 
thank you. You healed all diseases. Savior of all sin. You're the Lord most high. There's no other God like you, yes. There's no other king like you. Breathe you in. Ooh. Breathe you in. Ooh. 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 Breathe you in. Oh, yes. Blessings to you. Now, let's deal with something very deep on here. Something very deep on here. Something very deep on here. Something very strong on here. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. It says, Isaiah 12, Isaiah 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cast down, cut down? to the ground, which did weaken the nations. Now, saints, I want you to catch something in this text here. This is so mighty because in verse 12, it describes Satan, or Lucifer rather, it says, son of the morning. Now, if you remember in the Bible, it says that, um, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Remember that. It's talked about the morning that joy will cometh in the morning. Now, I want you to see this. There's a mystery to Lucifer. And I'm going to reveal this to you so that you can walk in it. If joy cometh in the morning, that means that morning is a realm in the spirit where joy is reserved meaning the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord, remember Nehemiah had a revelation about joy, that it was strength, which means that it was all. It was the anointing. It was the power of God. Now watch this. So Lucifer being son of the morning, and this is the same area where the joy is, where the strength is, where the power is. This shows you, this is why Satan has such wisdom on how to stop your joy Stop your anointing, stop your strength, stop your all. Because Lucifer used to be a carrier, a master of that. Notice what the Bible says here, son of the morning. Son of the morning. In Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, son of the morning. So the morning was a dimension in God where all the joy was. Lucifer was as the paradise for God. It was an angel responsible for giving joy. Now, saints, we know that is the guardian cherub and all that different type of stuff. I'm speaking to you about revelation. So some of you are on here. I know that you're going to have different things that you have heard. I know that some of you all have listened to teachers. Listen, I'm not reteaching a message. You see what I'm saying? So just always remember, I'm coming with something different. I'm not coming with the same revelation. God is still talking. So when, when I'm dealing with this here, we know that he's the guard, uh, guardian cherub, uh, cherubim, we, all that different type of stuff, anointed cherubim. But I'm dealing with the revelation here that's fresh. Lucifer was in the realm of mourning. That's why Lucifer does everything to stop you from reaching the morning. Remember, weeping may endure for the night. The night realm has been governed by Satan. The night realm has been governed by Satan. So what Satan 
was affiliated in Satan's past life with the night. And so with Satan being affiliated with the night realm and understanding how it moves, this is why Satan will send all type of things to you to mess you up so that you won't get to the morning, so that you'll stay in the night. So that you'll stay in the area that Satan now has been cursed to instead of reaching the area where God wants you to go. All right. So, saints, if you think about this. The whole job of Satan and demons is to stop you from getting to the place that they used to be. So when you're in a season, don't be ignorant and think that everything that you think in your mind is from God. Everything that you feel in your heart is from God. Everything that you sense is from God. It's not from God. Because Satan still is going to fight you from getting to that morning because Satan used to be the son of the morning. So the morning, once it is accomplished by you, it is a great torment to the enemy. Because the enemy never wanted no one to recapture those precious moments of joy, pleasure, strength that Lucifer used to have. So Isaiah 14, 12, imagine, there's something I want to show you here. Imagine that the presence of God was on Lucifer to occupy the realm of the morning. So think about this. Imagine what happens when you do even dream about operating from the morning. Think about operating from the morning. When you're speaking as if you're in the morning, when your faith is operating from the morning dimension, imagine how it attracts satanic attention. So think about that. So this is why if you overcome a temptation, why the temptation may come even stronger the next time around. Because remember, it has already been given an alert to the satanic kingdom that you have entered into mourning fun functionality. So saints, I want you to see this. Look at what Psalm chapter five, verse three says, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and I will look up. Now, saints, this is very important because David is revealing a secret here that in the morning, it is a time of communication with God and it is a time of dependency. That's why he said, look up. Think about this, people of God. Psalm chapter five, verse three. So now we're also finding out that morning is not just a place of joy, strength, or an anointing, but it's also a place of prayer and dependency. So think about this. The minute that you start moving away from leaning on God, his understanding, his instruction, his mindset, you're automatically underneath Lucifer's spell, Satan's spell. The minute that you're not in communication with God, you're already underneath Satan's spell. The minute that you're no longer uh, in the place of power, strength, joy, you're already underneath Satan's spell. So I want you to think about this. David understood that in the morning was a realm. Because in verse three, he says, in the morning. How could you be in the morning? That means that the morning can be impregnated by your presence. That means that you can be a seed in the presence of the morning. How could you be inside the morning? But David said, in the morning. He's saying that I'm inside of the morning. I'm occupying it. So it's a dimension. Are you seeing this, people of God? There's some deep prophetic stuff here. I hope you're catching it. But the Lord had ministered to me before I got on here, so I'm going to give it to you. And you'll, you'll receive understanding. In the morning, inside of the morning, 
is a place. Everybody is supposed to be inside of the morning every moment of your life. You're never supposed to leave outside of the morning. But I want to show you something that when you live by your feelings and somebody can aggravate you, it's easy for you to take a vacation from the morning. When things are not going your way and it looks like your prayers are not being answered, it's easy for you to get offended. It's easy for you to get offended and leave the morning. When you have sickness in your body or pain in your body and it looks like you're suffering, it's easy for you to leave the morning. Now, saints, I want you to see this, that when King Jesus touched that man that had that, that lame issue, he touches the man and he says, take up your bed and walk. The Pharisees, the religious people, they meet the man and said, it's against the law for you to take up your bed and walk. It's against the law. The man went from being in the morning, joy, strength, all power, victory, communication with God, dependency on God, dependency on King Jesus, to now he's operating in the night because of somebody coming to him and speaking a word to him and telling him that what he's doing is sin. And King Jesus told him to do it. Now, saints, this story tells you a lot of things because number one, what it shows you is that when you're living in the spirit, there will be people that seem spiritual that will come to you as if the spirit is having them talk to you. And even though they have a reputation of spiritual, it's wrong. Because the morning is revealed to a person through sacrifice, through a raw anointing, through God telling you something that's uncommon. See, the Pharisees was dealing with law. They said that it's unlawful for you to carry your bed. But King Jesus was dealing with sacrifice. I'm going to have you go against something that is law. I'm going to have you go against something that is not right, according to the natural man but I'm going to have you do it. And when you do it, I'm going to release this morning to you. I want to show you something. A major reason why people never enter the morning is because for you to enter the morning, you have to be willing to be taught in an uncommon path, a, a, a unusual path, a straight and narrow road a straight and narrow, and only a few that be that finds it. See, saints, I want to say something to you about Lot's wife. Remember, even King Jesus mentioned her in the Gospels. But what happened to Lot's wife? Remember, Lot's wife was being taught in an uncommon way. Let's deal with this woman because this woman did have an anointing on her. She did have a mantle on her because she made it with who? With Lot. And Lot was a man with who? Uh, Abraham. And Abraham was righteous. He was a prophet of God, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 20. So she, so, so she understands the prophetic to a degree. She knows how the prophetic operates and she's operating underneath a mantle for a time. They get to Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, I want to show you something that you probably never saw before. Bad company corrupts good character. They're around Sodom and Gomorrah, and slowly but surely, the spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah is now challenging them. Now, I want you to see this. The spirit in Sodom and Gomorrah did not enter utterly fully inside of Lot, but we see that Lot still has a level of witchcraft on him because the angels had to beckon him and wrestle with him to leave Sodom. He fought them and they had to get him out aggressively. Now, if you look at what the woman did, the Bible said that she looked back and was consumed. What happened? The woman went from morning to night. Do you ever wonder, okay, how did she go from morning to light in one moment? Because saints, I want you to see this. The whole test of your life is this. That though you are in the morning, God is going to still send you to regions, people, and assignments that are in the night. I want you to hear this. 
Even when you're in the morning, God will not let you stay in the morning because there'll be no testings, there'll be no challenges, and there'll be no way for you to even validify if you're in faith, if you're in obedience, if you're in surrender, if you're in submission. The night is going to allow you to identify your ability to overcome. You will not know if you overcame anything unless there is night present while you're mourning. And now you have to stay in the morning even though night is buffeting you. So people of God, if you understand, a lot of times that's why when you become anointed, God will put you in an assignment that's unanointed because your job is to bring the anointing to the unanointed. So if you look at people and you say, I don't like them, I don't wanna be here, I'm anointed, I love God, they don't love God, remember, that's why you're there. Because Nineveh is the only place where Jonah could fulfill his assignment. If Jonah does not go to Nineveh, then Jonah can't be Jonah. Because though Jonah think that the people are wicked and they are unworthy to have God, what Jonah don't understand that they are the table that has the next level of food that God going to feed him. So if Jonah don't go to Nineveh, he looking at the people like they are a problem. But he don't know that they are his prosperity in the spirit. Because he can't be successful with God without them. Them not listening to God give him an opportunity to listen to God. Then rebelling against God is giving him an opportunity to worship God. Their sin is giving him an opportunity to prove his righteousness before the Lord. So saints, I want you to see this. The spirit of God, when he brings you into the morning functionality, the realm where you're in joy, when you're in strength, the realm where you're in power, you're in charge, you're in dominion, God is going to willfully pitch you around things, people, and assignments that are weaker, that are more enslaved, that are more defeated, more manipulated, because you are there to balance the scale. See, your job is not a burden, it's a blessing. You have to realize that every single thing, whether it be your children not listening to you, whether it be your spouse causing you issues, whether it be a situation in your city, at your workplace, all of the night that's coming against you is fortifying the morning that you're in, in a greater realm. So saints, I want you to see this. King Jesus knew that he needs to be crucified. You know why? Because even though he is the morning and he's in the morning, unless he's opposed by night, the morning can't come forth in its full effectiveness. So King Jesus knows I need them to crucify me. I need, I, I need them to arrest me. I need them to spit on me. I need them to betray me. I, I need all these different types of things. I need this to happen. I need Judas to turn against me. I need him to give away the secret spot that we will go. Did you know that nobody knew that King Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane? Judas plus the disciples was the only people that knew this. So saints, the only way that anybody will ever know where King Jesus went, Judas had to tell them. And saints, it was necessary because if he remained in the morning, then King Jesus wouldn't have nobody opposed from the night. Saints, I want some of you all to start realizing this, that demons, they know about the realm of the morning. They know that praise causes the morning to operate. They know that forgiveness causes pray, uh, the morning to operate. They know that diligence causes the morning to operate. They, they, know, they know that uh, perseverance, sanctification. They know that prayer. They know that faith. They know that sowing seeds causes the morning to operate. They know that when you submit yourself unto God, when you respect divine authority, when you are serving in the right location, it causes the morning to operate. So saints, what I want you to see is this. A lot of times, evil spirits are responsible for making you not value the morning. 
so that the nighttime can defeat you. If you ever been in the morning for a long period of time, it's easy for you to look at the morning as if it is common. It is the usual because you're in the morning. Let me show you this revelation here. Adam and this woman, they're inside of the morning. And so the morning can now become a common thing. I'm here. I've been here for a while. We know we got dominion. We know we got power. Woohoo. And, and see, the mentality can start becoming curious and drifting off because the morning has become the usual. And saints, that's why the Bible, uh, uh, it says, let him that thinks he stands, uh, let him humble himself and take heed lest he fall. That's in the word of God in the New Testament. I think that's in Corinthians. Let him that thinks he stands, let him take heed lest he fall. The reason why it says that, because what it's saying to you is that when you think that you are established in the morning, be careful that you don't become so common with the morning that the night could take you out with full power, with full charge, and you don't even have the wisdom to fight back because you're so common with the morning. Saints, have you ever met somebody that hated you because you encouraged them? They didn't even want you to encourage them. You ever met somebody that when you gave them a compliment, they actually got angry at you? Or, or let me say it like this, not, not they get, you get, get a compliment and, and somebody get angry at you because some people are obnoxious. I'm not talking about that. Let me switch the example because that's, let me tell you something, that, 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 if you in public and somebody trying to, you know, that's, that don't mean that you got a demon. You, you understand order, the person doing too much. You see what I'm saying? So let me switch the example. If you ever notice that when somebody is depressed, if you try to build them up and make them feel great and they actually push you away, they're like, no, 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 no. And see, why is that happening? The person hates the morning. Are you hearing me? They hate the morning. Now, they, nobody will actually tell you, I hate joy. I hate morning. I hate God. You know, I hate only foolish people. Only foolish people. But think about it. Why would somebody not want to be encouraged? Why would somebody not want to come out of discouragement and depression? Why wouldn't somebody want you to give them hope? It's because Satan has made the morning disgusting to them. Saints, do you know that before somebody commits suicide, that the demon of oppression causes the morning to look like it's an adversary? Before someone shoots themselves or cut themselves or jump off of a bridge, they have already heard the demon converse with them that the morning is disgusting. The morning is your enemy. But who is doing that? The son of the morning. Isaiah 14, 12 says that Lucifer was the son of the morning. So saints, I want you to catch this. You could be acquainted with the morning, with the anointing so much that you, it can become common to you that you can start disrespecting it. So I want you to see this. Um, Gehazi saw Elisha every day. Gehazi watched Elisha every day. He saw Elisha do miracles. As a matter of fact, he watched Elisha just give an instruction to Naaman and said, just dip into Jordan seven times. And so Elisha is being seen by Gehazi every day. He watches Elisha put on his sandals. He watches Elisha. Um, he watches Elisha eat food. He watches Elisha uh, wash his face. And he watches Elisha wash his hands. And he was washing Elisha's hands. As a matter of fact, he was serving Elisha. So he's watching so much of Elisha that he becomes common. As a result, now we see that the, the servant Gehazi 
is now seeing his same prophet, Elisha, tell Naaman, I don't want the money. I don't want the clothes that you're going to give me. Now, saints, let me explain this to you as well. There's a reason why Elisha didn't take the, um, the clothing or none of the money that Elisha was given. Do you know why? Because if you look at the latter part of the text, Elisha explained to Gehazi, this was not the time for this. Meaning it wasn't the time for me to receive from his hand. This wasn't my moment to do that. That this not the prophetic instruction for this. And saints, as prophets, I understand this because there are some opportunities, whether it be business, whether it be ministry, that sometimes the father will tell you it's not time for this. You can't take this. You can't walk through this door. You can't uh, affiliate yourself here. You can't pursue this connection. You can't pursue that door, pursue this opportunity because it's not time for it. It doesn't mean that it'll never happen, but it's not time for it. So Gehazi sees Elisha all the time. But now he's so acquainted with the morning that when nighttime comes, mm, 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 nighttime is actually more entertaining to Gehazi than the morning that he's in with Elisha. So he doesn't see the supernatural, the miraculous. He doesn't saw the prophetic moving. He doesn't saw the apostolic power of miracles moving. Elisha got a double portion. He on top. He, he doing great and mighty things. But Elisha is in the morning realm and Gehazi is in that same morning realm, but it's, it has become casual or casual. It has become the usual. It has become the common. So now... Gehazi actually is bored. Oh my goodness. Gehazi is bored. Gehazi is idle. Gehazi thinks, man, you stupid. Why wouldn't you take this? Gehazi has lost his sense of submission, surrender, obedience, respect, commitment, loyalty. And Gehazi says, you don't know what you're doing. I'm going to go in secret and I'm going to connect with the night and I'm going to get what you refused while you was in the morning. I'm going to leave this morning stuff. I'm going to go to the night and see what's popping. And saints, he goes to the night. But what he don't understand that when you go to the night, you got to receive the fullness of the night. See, when you go to the night, you got to receive the fruit and the consequences. Oh my goodness. You got to receive the harvests and the different things that come with the night. See, the night, that's why the Bible say the pleasures of sin is just for a season. After the season, you start seeing what the night is all about. Now demons start tormenting you. Now you don't got peace of mind, paranoia. Now you're always looking over your back. Now you don't have no access to God. Now is, is a breach between you and the spirit of the Lord. Now all of your angelic ministry has stopped. Now you are available to car accidents. You're available, available to premature death. You're available to diseases and sicknesses. You're available to depression, discouragement, oppression, fear, anxiety attacks. You are a slave to wrong thoughts, wrong dreams. You get attacked in your sleep and can't help it because the night got consequences. You have physical illnesses that you can't break. You have things going on in your finances that's disturbing your comfort in this life, your success. You have different distractions that even when you will to do good, that evil that is present has more of a stronghold over you, over your will to do good. So the night has different, it has different consequences to it. So saints, I want you to see this. In the word of God, it says Gehazi, he goes and pursues Naaman and he lies to Naaman. He says, do you know that Elisha sent me to you and told me to tell you to give me the garments? He told me to tell you to give me all that stuff that you had because we got some young prophets. They're trying to buy some FUBU. They're trying to buy some Gucci. I shouldn't have brought FUBU in there. I don't know why I brought FUBU. <laughs> they're trying to buy some what? What Adidas. They're trying to buy some Versace, man. They're trying to buy some Louis Vuitton, man. And, and, and just give us those garments right there. We need them. And so he go gather the garments, Gehazi. But Gehazi don't understand. He's in the night. 
and the night is more fascinating to him than the, than the morning. But he don't, watch this here. Gehazi does not know that the son of the morning, Lucifer, has tricked him into loving the night because Lucifer used to be the son of the morning. And when Lucifer sees that Gehazi is operating as a son of the morning, oh my goodness, Lucifer looks at a son of the morning replacement and said, how could I get a son of the morning to agree with the night so that the son of the morning position and favor that he's been given can be canceled like it was canceled on me? And so in the spirit realm, Gehazi cannot see that the son of the morning that used to be the ex son of the morning, the used to be son of the morning, the past son of the morning is trying in the spirit realm, in the invisible realm to get the, the current son of the morning, which is Gehazi, to operate from loving the night. So saints, Gehazi bites on the bait and watch this. He comes back to Elisha and Elisha said, where were you? He said, I didn't go nowhere. What you talking about? I didn't go nowhere. He lies to Elisha. You know why? Because in the night realm, Satan is called the father of lies. So, <laughs> so King Jesus said in the gospels that Satan is the father of lies. So the first fruit that manifests through Gehazi, when he speaks to Elisha, the prophet of God of his life, that's in the morning, and he used to be in the morning with Elisha, is the first thing that he does is lie, which shows you that he has been possessed by the night that he was entertained by. He has become possessed. It has been in his influence. He has been influenced, rather, by the night that he has power over. Remember, he's following a double portion carrier. So he has great power over the night. But now he's a slave to the very night that he has power over. Saints, I come to tell some of you all that when sin is controlling you and you know better, it's because you casualize the morning so much that you have become a slave to the night. When, when, you, when you start hating the morning, now the night has the ability to create a stronghold. So saints, Gehazi, he yields to the night. He does the whole night thing, right? And he operates in, in that night spirit, right? I want to show you something. So as a result, after he's operating in the night, here's what takes place. Elisha says, you will have leprosy for now on. You will have leprosy. Think about it. Leprosy is in the night. It's not in the morning. So now his physical body has to be plagued because of the night that he loved. So after he loves the night, his physical body is now being attacked by the same night that he loved. And so saints, think about this. When Gehazi gets the leprosy, the night is now ruling over Gehazi because Gehazi was actually a ruler in the morning. Man, I can't keep doing this, man. I'm going to get Facebook up to par with this level of glory. I'm going to get Facebook. I'm going to work it. But man, I can't keep doing this, man. <sighs> See, saints, when night enslaves you, it's a revelation that you had all of the favor, all of the power to be ruler in the light in the morning. So the leprosy is to let him know. Now you are a slave to the night. Because you had night as its slave, as a slave to you. But the minute that you love your slave, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Oh, oh. 
as soon as you started becoming one with your slave, you started pursuing your slave. See, the knight was a slave to you, but now you are a slave to the knight because the knight was supposed to be underneath your feet. Now you, you pursued the knight's feet. Now, now knight got its foot on your neck. And saints, remember the neck was the area where the yoke would be placed on the animal. And so what you got to understand is um, the reason why God said in Psalm 23, I'll anoint your head with oil, because when your head has oil on it, it goes straight to your neck. See, saints, some of you all may not understand the symbolism in the Bible. So Psalm 23 said, I'll anoint your head with oil, because when the oil is dripping, it goes straight to your neck. If you ever put water on your head, the first thing that it starts to saturate before your whole body is your neck. It goes straight from your head down to your neck. And that was the area where yokes were placed. So saints, that's why when the anointing is on you, you have power to dominate and rule because the all loosens that yoke. It can't stay there. It breaks it. Now saints, think about this. So now Gehazi has leprosy for the rest of his days on earth. Saints, do you know that Gehazi never got healed from the leprosy? Do you know that, right? For the rest of his days on earth, the night had a testimony, I'm on you. And everybody could see it because saints, when people had leprosy, their skin began to, uh, it was like a metamorphosis into like an animal type. All type of stuff will happen. Some people have finny hands. Some people's skin will peel off utterly. It was visible. If you was a leper, everybody would know that you're a leper. And also, they could smell you. Leprosy carries a smell. But saints, I want to show you something. Why did God pick leprosy for Miriam and pick leprosy for Gehazi, because both of them was underneath God prophets, prophets that were in the God realm and the God realm was in the prophet. And both of the prophets were training, training both Gehazi and training both Miriam. So they both got leprosy because God is showing them this was your problem flesh. You have a God prophet. You have me talking to you. You have me making it easy. I'm teaching you. I'm training you. But you, you, you miss because of this. So God struck the very place in which they switch from morning to night. Saints, I'm going to say this, this be real wrong. But saints, in life, when you meet people, you really don't know why they are sick. I'm not saying everybody, because some people are carrying a cross. Yes, they are. Other people are cursed. Yes, they are. And there are some people that are bearing the weight of the consequence for touching God's anointed and doing his prophet's harm. Remember what I'm saying to you. Some of you young people that's watching me right now, remember this. When people want to stir you up to laugh at a man of God, they think it's funny. Step aside. Learn the laws of restraining yourself. Find out what is God's reaction about this. Now, saints, let me just tell you something. Everybody is not a man of God and everybody is not anointed. Do you know that there are people that talk on Facebook that don't have a mantle on them, but they'll preach the word to you, but they don't have a mantle on them. There are people that teach on social media. They teach in churches that don't have a mantle on them. That's not a shocker. Remember, Nicodemus was teaching and didn't have a mantle on him. King Jesus told him, do you not understand what it means to be born again and you're a teacher? You're a ruler? He was teaching and did not have a mantle on him. So hear me. There are some people, guess what? 
they don't have a mantle on them. They are not from God and they are deceptive. They use the word of God to be relevant. They use the name of Jesus to be relevant. There are people like that, but that's not our concern. What I'm saying to you is that when God sends your prophet to you, remember that the prophet is in the morning. So if you get so common with the morning, night can come to you at any given time and stir you up. And guess what? When night stirs you up, you'll end up becoming a slave to that very night. And that night has consequences that you can't see. Remember, it's called night. In the night, you can't see certain things. In the night, certain things are hidden. If you go to a neighborhood and it's completely dark, you can't see all the houses that's on the side. You can't see the little Rottweiler that's behind that fence that's about to bite you. You can't see the little raccoon. You can't see the possum. You can't see the, 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 the bugs, the night bugs. You can't see the bat that's flying in the air. You can't see the raven. You can't see because it's night. You can't see the car about to drive and hit you because it's night. So sight is limited. Gehaz Saints, I want to shock you with this. Gehazi saw the garments of Naaman, but he didn't see the leprosy. And guess what? Do you know what really happened? Naaman had leprosy. So how did Gehazi receive leprosy? Because Gehazi took a garment of a leper, a former leper. So all God did was take the curse that was upon Naaman and placed that curse on Gehazi. And saints, think about it. Gehazi was with Elisha longer than Naaman. Naaman had just met Elisha for the first time and Elisha got a blessing and Gehazi who was with Elisha for years got a cursing. Listen to me, listen to me. Mm. Saints, Gehazi was serving for years. N Naaman had just met Elisha for the first time. And the blessing and the angels minister to Naaman and demons minister to Gehazi. Saints, this is a common case of what? The morning has been despised. It has been made to usual to Gehazi and now the night takes him out. Saints, there are times in your life where you could be occupied with the anointing so heavy and you can expect the anointing so heavy and you could become so used to the anointing, so heavy, that you could actually become someone that entertains the night. And the night can become your curiosity in the presence of you being in the morning. Saints, do you know that morning does not stop you from pursuing night. Morning does not stop you from loving the night. But morning is an opportunity for you to grow to love the morning. Mm, mm, mm. Morning is God giving you a chance to train yourself to love the morning. Morning is where you're empowered to become a student of the morning. Morning is where you're in the presence of God for you to enjoy the morning. You'll have to develop yourself into entertaining the morning, liking the morning, protecting the morning, engaging the morning, 
receive in the morning. Morning is a place where angels are constantly surrounding you, ministering for you. So it's easier for you to get all of the weapons that are in the morning. Saints, if you're listening to me right now with a pure heart, I'm not talking about the mumu, the cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs people. <laughs> if you're watching me right now with a pure heart and you're listening to me by spirit, now you can fight me all day because you flesh. Flesh always fights spirit. But if you're listening to me via the spirit, you're in the morning right now. What I'm doing is I'm giving you the weapons of morning. I'm giving you the mantles of the morning. So that when you encounter night, when you get off this broadcast or something happens tomorrow, you, something happens two weeks from now. Something happens two days from now. That you'll have the mantles of the morning to defeat the night. You'll notice what King Jesus said. He told Peter, watch and pray, lest you fall into temptation. What you have to see here is that King Jesus is saying, watching and praying is of the morning. If you don't watch and pray, you'll step into the night. The night is temptation, meaning things are going to be pulling at you. And you're going to seem like you're too powerless to say no. But if you watch and pray now, it will protect you from the night when it seems like it wants to challenge you at its strongest. Saints, I want to say something to you that is easy to get excited when you're in the morning and feel like you're untouchable. But the morning does not always have a tangible realm to it. When you're in the morning, you, 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 there will be days where you won't even feel the morning 24 hours, no matter what you do. There, there will be days when you're in the morning where it will feel like the morning is not profitable to you. Saints, do you know that there'll be a day in your life where it will look like the morning is taking advantage of you? I call that the day of stupid. Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't never have those days. Because I'm a man of understanding. And that's why I want to push the point to you. To cry out to God to give you the spirit of understanding. Not just wisdom. Because when you understand the Lord. You become patient. You become pleasurable to him. You become faithful. Consistent. You become humble and meek. And he can teach you and train you. He can take you to any avenue that he wants and you'll still love him. You'll still enjoy him and you'll still walk in the spirit concerning your God. Why did one third of the angels turn against God? They were in the morning. They was curious about the night. Why did Samson tell the woman the secret to his strength and God had already told him not to? He was in the morning, but he wanted to he wanted to explore. What if I just give her what she wants to know? Why, why don't I just share? Saints, Samson reminds me of one of those children that you train to not do something. Then they get around a bad child. And the bad child tells them, why you can't do it? I do it. And then they end up doing it. Samson's, Samson remind me of, of that. Samson remind me of somebody that they get influence. Or what we call it, peer pressure. But saints, peer pressure is not really peer pressure. You know what it is? It's morning being corrupted by night. Because even people that blame peer pressure... Think about it. Why didn't you put pressure on your peer with the realm that you was in? You may say it's peer pressure, but how come they had the leverage to put pressure on you to do wrong, but you didn't use the pressure for them to do right? Why didn't you stand up to the pressure that you had? You yielded to that pressure because you didn't use yours. 
Oh my goodness. It's just morning submitting tonight. So you have to betray your morning to listen to someone's night. There's people like Daniel in the Bible that refused to betray their mourning. That even when they went low, Daniel still began to fly and rise high and lift it up. And Daniel, when he saw that they passed the law against him, the Bible said he opened up his window and started ascending. When I say ascending, I'm adding that on. I'm describing what he did. And while he prayed, he was ascending high while they went for a low blow. And he never left his morning to deal with their night. His morning delivered him from their night. So when they pit him in the lion's den, the morning had angels. And the angels came and shut the lion's mouth that were from the night. They were on assignment for the night. And the angels overpowered what was night because Daniel chose to remain in the morning. I want some of you all on here to always remember this. Keep yourself in the morning. Keep yourself in the morning. Don't let anyone determine how you choose to carry yourself. Don't let anybody decide your decisions that's in the night. Stay in the morning. Morning has a mantle. Morning has a miracle. Morning has money. Morning has the mind of Christ. Morning. Morning is a missile. It's a weapon. Enjoy the morning while you're there and stay in the morning. Don't leave the morning because many people from the night start opposing you. When people mock you from the night, don't leave the morning to try to convince those that are in the night and love the night. But represent the morning. Embrace the morning. And protect the morning at all costs. Even if it seems like the night is winning. Don't betray the morning. Don't leave the morning because everybody is leaving the morning. Stop looking at how many people are in the morning to see if the morning should be your choice. Stop letting people talk you out of the morning. Stop letting people tell you, you know, we all over in the night. So you might as well come over in the night too. We all listening to the night. We all love the night. We all participate in the night. No. Even if there's nobody with you, stay in the morning. Even if you can't identify massive support, stay in the morning. Even if you don't feel the morning, because there's times you're not going to feel the morning, stay in the morning. Even if. The morning does not seem like it is appeasing your flesh, your feelings, your expectations. Be a steward of the morning and watch what God do. Psalm 16, verse 7. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. Now, saints, some of you all don't let the Lord counsel you. If you don't let the Lord counsel you, guess what happens? The devil can cancel you. Because when you don't let the Lord counsel you, the devil cancels you by getting you offended. 
by getting you anxious, by getting you in covetousness, competition, making you jealous, making you weary. Hallelujah. 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 But stay in the counsel of God. Because in counsel is understanding. See, the spirit of understanding is wrapped up in counsel. So when counsel is there, you'll understand something. Samson, he needed to be count, uh, counsel, counsel. Because Samson wondered as a God prophet, why would the people want something that God didn't want? But remember, God gave Samuel, Samuel counsel. And God told Samuel, let them pick their king. That's what they want. Let them have their desire. God said they did not reject you. They rejected me. Samuel needed to be counseled so that he could understand what he was feeling and how he should respond to what he was seeing. Counsel is so glorious because it removes all of your uneasiness and it causes you to sit back and praise the Lord. It causes you to give God thanks. The minute that you have counsel over your head, now your soul can submit itself to understanding and your behavior can submit itself to excellence and your atmosphere can submit itself to praise. Psalm 16, verse seven, it says that my heart also instructs me in the night seasons. How could your heart instruct you? You know, your heart is your soul. It's your mind. You understand that, right? Your heart and your soul has the same functionality. But I said that heart represents your ear. Soul represents your, your sight. Your eyes. Because how I got that, because if you look at the word heart, inside the word heart is the word ear. And how I did with soul, because remember, the woman in the garden whose name was Adam, firstly, she sinned after she saw. So she looked in it, the Bible said it was pleasant to her eyes. So sin happens in the soul. Her soul sinned as a result of her eyes. So how I differentiate heart, how the Lord uh, do it is heart and soul, they have the same functionality, but how you could differentiate it is heart dealing with the ear. Soul is dealing with the sight. Your soul wants what it sees. But he said, my, my heart, which is my soul, it instructs me in the night season. Why is he saying that my heart is instructing me? Because saints, he was not always in the night season. He was in the morning seasons as well. But in the morning seasons, he did not casualize it. It did not become too common to him. So when he got into the night season, he remembered what was spoken to him in the morning. So he's saying, my heart instructs me in the night season. What he's saying is, my soul did not forget what it was taught in the morning. So I'm a pull from the mantles of the morning now that I'm in the night so that I could receive divine prophetic instructions of how to not let the night overtake me and defeat me. See, saints, if you ever get defeated by night, there's several things that you want to see. You did not remember what was spoken to you in the morning. And what did I tell you that the morning was? Joy cometh in the morning. Joy, strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, I believe. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So the morning represents strength. It represents anointing. It represents joy. It represents all. So when you're in the place of the night season, if your heart is not instructing you, 
is proof that you have forgotten what the morning has given you, which was joy, strength, and all, and anointing. And also, what did I tell you? Remember what David said? I read that in the early part of the text. How he said, in the morning, I, my, my prayer shall be directed to you. So that represents communication. Then he said, I will look unto you. That represents dependency. So if you ever fall to darkness, it's proof that you did not depend on God. And also, you did not pray. You did not communicate with him. There was a breach in your heart, in your soul, where you took matters into your own hands and you contemplated what he said was illegal and what he taught you not to contemplate. See, see, you can't even sin against God until your mind chooses to rebel against the meditation that God told you was illegal. So saints, the minute that Miriam began to meditate on Moses being wrong, she was already in witchcraft. So the witchcraft had to proceed through her conversation because she already was there. The minute that her mind trespassed against God. Remember what King Jesus told the disciples, forgive us of our trespasses. That means forgive us for when we entered places that you did not authorize us to go. You did not teach us to enter here, but yet we entered there and we stayed there. We enjoyed it. We felt empowered. We felt like we was in charge. Forgive us of our trespasses. Forgive us of our trespasses. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Le bosan de le vose vele di alaba. Rande de veson de le vose vele di ala. Lo blos de bele ve kirioso. There's something happening right now. There's something happening right now. The angel of the Lord, my angel Arrhenius, just gave me a scroll. And as I took the scroll, the angel said, the lifestyle of Judas and the end of his story. He ate the fruit of his own labor. I'll explain this to you. I'm just, I'm not really here right now. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what I'm seeing right now. And my angel Arrhenius just told me that the minute that Judas started putting his hand in the bag and Judas started conversing with the chief priests about how he could sell out on Jesus, he had already died. So remember what my angel Arrhenius just told me is that he ended up in death in the physical because he already had entered death in the mental. So what was in his heart manifested to his flesh? What was in his soul begin to manifest in his body? So his body died because his soul had already died. Oh my goodness. His soul had already disconnected from Jesus a long time ago because King Jesus was instructing him to put his hand in the bag. The minute he was doing those things, he had already disconnected from King Jesus because now his behavior was not what he was being taught by his savior. So what my angel Arrhenius just told me is that what Judas did was he, he reaped the fruit of his labor. He ate the fruit of it because he had already stepped into death. And my angel Arrhenius just told me that Gehazi had already stepped into death when he thought that Elisha was stupid for not taking those garments. Miriam had stepped into death when she thought that Moses didn't know how to pick a wife. See, you could step into death. Ananias had already stepped into death. What my angel Irene is telling me is that when Ananias spoke to his wife and told her, just listen to what I'm telling you. Don't give Peter that money and don't be afraid. Ananias had already disconnected from Peter. So, when his body shut off, that was the second death. What my angel Arrhenius just said to me, he said, tell your people that people do not die in the physical first. If they die, 
They die in the mental, in the soul. And when they disconnect from God's instruction, their physical body just snitch on them. And their physical body just speaks of what they had already did in their thoughts. There's some of you are watching me right now. You just need to repent and, and just let the Lord give you a fresh start. Father, I repent of any sin inside of me, any wickedness in my life. And Lord, I ask you to take me over and possess me. King Jesus, fill me with your spirit, your wisdom, your understanding, and your counsel. Say, Jesus, I want you. Some of you all on here, you should just say that. King Jesus, I want you. I don't want evil. I don't want wickedness. I don't want unrighteousness. I don't want rebellion. I want you. I want you.